On January 30, 2025, Uganda's Ministry of Health announced an outbreak of Sudan Ebola virus disease after confirming it through three national laboratories. The person showed symptoms between January 20 and 21st and passed away on January 29 at the National Referral Hospital in Kampala. By January 30, 45 people who had contact with the patient were identified, including 34 healthcare workers and 11 family members. Sudan virus disease is in the same virus family as Ebola. It is a serious disease with a high death rate, ranging from 41% to 70% in past outbreaks. There are no approved vaccines or treatments for SVD, so the risk to public health is high. In this video, we'll discuss everything you need to know about Sudan Ebola virus, including the symptoms and causes of this virus, how it's transmitted and who is most at risk, and how to manage and treat it if it spreads in your area. Before we deep dive into the video, make sure to like this video. Your support helps us reach more people who need this information. So what exactly is Sudan Ebola virus? Sudan Ebola virus is part of the Ebola virus family, which also includes Zaire Ebola virus, Thai Forest Ebola virus, Bundibugyo Ebola virus, and Reston Ebola virus. These viruses are believed to be naturally found in African fruit bats. Ebola virus first gained attention in 1976 when two large outbreaks of hemorrhagic fever occurred almost at the same time in Zaire and Sudan. The viruses responsible for these outbreaks were different, now known as separate species. The Zaire outbreak happened in a mission hospital where syringes were reused between patients, causing the virus to spread when a patient was unknowingly infected. Nearly 100 other patients were infected through these contaminated syringes, all of whom died. Many healthcare workers and family members also became infected, resulting in 280 deaths out of 318 cases. A similar large outbreak occurred in Kikwit, DRC, in 1995, where more than 300 people were infected and over 80% died. This outbreak was also linked to hospital transmission when a patient's surgery spread the virus to the operating team. The origin of the 1976 Sudan virus outbreak, which affected nearly 300 patients, was also unknown. Virus spread was fueled by hospital transmission, with family members and healthcare workers infected due to lack of protective gear. The case fatality rate for this outbreak, along with two others in 1979 and 2000, was about 50%. The 2000 outbreak in Gulu, Uganda, was the largest, with 425 cases. Starting in 1996, a new pattern emerged in Central Africa where humans were infected with the Ebola Zaire virus after contact with sick or dead chimps or gorillas. In the first known outbreak of this type, 19 people in Gabon who butchered a dead chimp became infected and most died. The virus also spread among gorillas and chimps in Gabon and the Republic of Congo, causing a die-off of these animals and repeated outbreaks among local people. Although bats are suspected to be the original source of infection, there is no solid proof. A third Ebola species, discovered in the Ivory Coast in the 1990s, killed a chimp and nearly killed a scientist who examined it. This virus hasn't been detected since. The fourth Ebola species, called the Reston virus, was first identified in 1989 in a monkey quarantine facility in Virginia, USA. It caused a deadly outbreak in macaques imported from the Philippines. Similar incidents occurred in the following years until the Philippine facility was shut down. The symptoms of Ebola disease begin similarly to the flu, with common signs including a severe headache, muscle pain, sore throat, and fatigue. As the disease progresses, more severe symptoms develop, such as a rash or blood spots under the skin, petechiae or purpura, loss of appetite, and vomiting or diarrhea, which may become bloody. Other alarming symptoms include bleeding or bruising, red or bloodshot eyes, and overall weakness. These symptoms can escalate quickly, so it's crucial to seek medical help immediately if you experience any of these signs. Ebola disease spreads through direct contact with the body fluids of infected humans or animals. These fluids include urine, stool, saliva, 
breast milk, and vaginal fluids. The virus can also be transmitted by touching surfaces, objects, or medical equipment contaminated with the virus. Consuming the meat of infected animals is another way the virus can spread. Even after symptoms subside, the virus may persist in certain parts of the body, such as the eyes, brain, spinal fluid, and semen for weeks or even months, posing a continued risk of transmission. Humans get Ebola through contact with the body fluids or tissues of infected animals, such as bats, non-human primates, and antelopes, which carry the virus. Once a person is infected, the virus can spread to others, typically through close contact with family members or healthcare workers caring for the sick person. Ebola is diagnosed through a blood test. It can be hard to diagnose because its symptoms are similar to other illnesses, like yellow fever, malaria, and typhoid fever. Healthcare providers will test you if you have symptoms and if you might have been exposed to Ebola. Be sure to tell your provider about any recent travel or contact with people or animals that may have had Ebola. Ebola is treated with two monoclonal antibody treatments, Inmazeb and Ibanga. These treatments act like your body's natural antibodies to help fight the virus while your body builds its own defenses. Inmazeb is a combination of three monoclonal antibodies, while Ibanga is a single monoclonal antibody. These treatments have mainly been tested for Zaire Ebola virus infections. In addition to monoclonal antibody treatments, healthcare providers will focus on managing your symptoms and treating any complications to keep you stable. They may give you intravenous IV fluids. Treatments for specific symptoms, such as pain management or stabilizing blood pressure. Ebola disease can be prevented, especially for those at high risk, through the Irvebo vaccine. This vaccine is recommended for people who work with Ebola viruses in labs and healthcare workers treating Ebola patients. Public health organizations work to control outbreaks by monitoring for new cases and ensuring healthcare workers stay safe. To help prevent the spread, you can take these steps. Use protective equipment like masks, goggles, aprons, and gloves when caring for someone with Ebola. Avoid touching their body fluids and wash your hands after any contact, even if wearing gloves. Avoid touching the body of someone who has died from Ebola or use protective equipment if necessary, especially for funeral customs. Avoid contact with the body fluids and tissues of animals that could be infected, whether they are dead or alive. Do not eat bush meat, meat from wild animals. If you've recently traveled to an area with an Ebola outbreak, monitor yourself for symptoms for 21 days. Seek medical care right away if you develop symptoms. Isolate yourself from others if you think you may have Ebola. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit from this information. And if you have any questions or thoughts, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more updates and insights on health-related topics. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.